This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Hall and we need to talk about Soul. So, I was watching Soul when it came out on Christmas Day and there was a message in this film that really resonated with me so strongly that I almost burst out into tears because it's something that I personally have dealt with and actually went to therapy for months and months and months to uh, work on this particular problem and to work on a situation that I experienced that Joe Gardner in the film actually experiences. And I expected to see at least one or two videos come out shortly afterwards talking about this and I don't see any of that happening. And I'm like, is no one talking about this? Uh, we need to talk about this. And as someone who has gone down this route, and I know that there's a lot of people on this channel who are going down this route because I see your letters. I see letters that people have sent in the past. I see uh, messages now, I see emails now, that I know so many of y'all are doing the same thing that I was doing, and I want to stop y'all for a second, please watch this video, and this video is for anyone who has some sort of passion that they want to pursue, whether that be anything artistic, whether that be anything like a dream job, anything like a big goal, anything that you're so passionate about that you have this great desire to push forward regardless of the circumstances. Especially if you're in the entertainment field because I have a lot of specifics with that. Before we get into that, I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask what I thought about the film. I thought the film was amazing. Easily top five favorite Pixar films for me, especially because of this message which is so personal to me. And we'll get more than that in a second. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen the film, go watch it because we're about to talk a whole lot of spoilers because it's kind of important to talk about the film and the main message happens at the end so I really want to talk about it. Throughout the film we're following Joe Gardner and we see Joe Gardner his whole dream is for jazz you know he's always wanted to be a jazz musician ever since his dad took him to that jazz club he he gets there we see his journey of finally getting there and then whenever he gets there he seems unfulfilled he looks around going is this it? I thought, it, I thought it would feel different. What do we do now? That's basically what's going through his head, but why? Why is this thing that he loved, that, that he finally got to do the thing he loves, professionally, with Dorothea Williams, he got to live his dream, and he's unsatisfied. Is it he's ungrateful? Is it he's decided he's not good enough? Is it just he didn't like it in the first place? What happened? And it all really boils down to one thing, is that he has put extremely unrealistic expectations on jazz, jazz music, and just this job and this world. We see throughout the film that he has latched onto this and he can't let it go. He has become obsessed with it, to the point where when he's talking with a friend, all he can talk about is jazz. Look at the barber. He even said that until that conversation, when 22 was in his body and talking to him, that was the first time they ever had a conversation that wasn't about jazz. And the barber was actually thrilled about it because he's a balanced, he's, I'm assuming he's a balanced human being who <laughs> thinks about more than just one thing. And so it was refreshing and he was excited about it. Uh, but Joe was still just so, in, like he was, you could see it in his face, he was shocked. Uh, especially someone that he's only talked to about jazz. That, I'm sure that was a huge revelation and a huge shock to him. And we also see that a big reason he's held onto it so strongly is the opposition that he's facing with his community, particularly his mom. His mom is very clear. She does not like him doing this. She does not want him to go after this because of what happened with his father. From an outsider's opinion, yeah, you can really look at this and see, I totally understand where his mom is coming from, but in the eyes of someone who is that obsessed with what it is they do, that creates huge rifts between the person who is obsessed and the other individuals. His obsession is literally ruining his relationship with his mom. And then naturally, I'm sure as he went to music school, I, I went to music school and I heard this too, is you've got to eat, sleep, and breathe whatever you're doing. Whether For me, it was singing. You gotta eat, sleep, and breathe singing. You gotta work on this so much and you gotta do all this and it's a whole lot and you basically have to dedicate everything you are to this one craft. And, um, because of that, you're pouring so much time and energy and effort into it, it becomes so important to you that it trumps all else. And whenever you get to that point, you have that much built up around it. 
you put extremely unrealistic expectations on that. You expect if you get this job, it's going to fix your relationship with those around you who have told you for years that you can't do it. In this case, Joe's mom. He's expecting that this show is going to fix everything between his mom. But what he discovered was he actually patched things up relatively well before they even went to the show. Before he even went into the job, he had that conversation. It was him talking with his mom that actually started working things out. She was there and she was thrilled and she was proud and she was like, great job, son. It wasn't the music that did that, it was him. And he was also very dissatisfied with where he was at the moment. He didn't want to be with his uh, middle school band anymore. And he wanted out of there so bad he felt stifled by it that he couldn't even see all the great stuff he was doing for these kids. He was so blinded by what he wanted, he couldn't see the positive impact he was having on other people. He's convinced that's going to fix his life, that everything's going to be perfect when he does that. And it doesn't. It's because he put so many unrealistic expectations on success and getting there. And I can say from experience, I did this too. I kept saying that, you know, as long as I could make entertainment my, my career and that I could fully live off it and pay all my bills with it, then that would be when I've made it. And I got there maybe three, four years ago. I was able to finally quit my part-time job at the Disney store and I remember being so excited. I get to go in there and do creative stuff all day and I sat at my computer kind of thinking, now what? I've gotten there. I'm living a comfortable life doing entertainment, but it doesn't feel like I thought it would. It doesn't give me the gratification that I thought it would. It didn't heal the relationships that I hoped would have been healed. It didn't fix my relationship with my art. In fact, I dove into it deeper, trying to find that emotionally satisfying moment that I assumed every artist before me had felt. I, for years, just kind of sat there going, I don't really, I felt like I'd lost all my drive, all of my ambition, because I'd gotten there. And it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I thought I wanted. But I knew it was so where I was supposed to be. It was such a weird emotion. And I truly made entertainment as a whole my identity. I couldn't separate myself from that. And one of the things I learned in therapy and by being with my friends is that I am so much more than my craft. I'm so much more than my voice. I'm so much more than the YouTube videos I put out. I'm so much more than all of this. This doesn't mean I don't love what I do. This doesn't mean that I don't love creating videos and that I don't love doing voice work. I absolutely do. But now I'm at a point where it no longer controls and runs my life. Before, I had to be Brian the YouTuber, Brian the voice actor. Now I'm just Brian. I'm just Brian who happens to also do this stuff. And you know what? That's a much better place to be in. And it's one that I'm far happier in. It's also why at the end of the movie, I'm really glad that you didn't see what Joe did when he went back to Earth. Was this such an emotional breakdown for you that you won't go back to, you know, doing professional jazz and go back to the school and work there? Or are you gonna do something completely different that has nothing to do with music because you got there and it wasn't what you thought it was? Or are you gonna stay a jazz musician and find a new passion within that? And I love the fact that you leave that open-ended because you have the option to do all of that. If you guys watched my video on Tuesday, I talked a lot about this, how during the summer, I tried a bunch of different things. I had come to the realization shortly before all this that I had made it such a huge identity with me. What would I be without it? So I took some time away from it to find who I was without it. And I really liked the dude I found. I took the time to fix my relationships with other people, not with entertainment, but through therapy and talking it out with them and everything else. And it was so healing. Like I also mentioned in the video on Tuesday, I finally started getting a lot of voice work. And let me tell you something, finding voice work now feels so much more gratifying than it did before. Before it felt like a longing that I couldn't get to where I needed to go. And here it's like, it finally felt like I wanted it to <laughs> because I didn't have unrealistic expectations set up around it. It's just like, this is a great opportunity and I can't wait to pursue it. So please, Pursue your dreams. Do what you love. But in the process, don't lose who you are. 
Wow, that got, that got a lot more serious than I was expecting it to get. I'm, I'm very emotional about this topic, if you can't tell. Um, but on a lighter note, if you guys are looking for a way to expand your passions and to really find some people who know what they're doing, who are willing to impart their knowledge to you, you need to go on Skillshare. And thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who has wanted to learn a new skill or pursue their passions. There are tons and tons of topics that you can choose from. Everything from like animation, to film and video, to graphic design, to starting your own business, to photography, and so much more. I've actually been using Skillshare to learn the guitar. I've been watching Guitar Fundamentals with Mike Boyd and have really enjoyed his teaching style because you learn the basics of guitar while also learning songs that people have actually heard of. Skillshare has created an environment designed for maximum learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. You may think, ah oh, man, I'd love to learn this new skill, but classes around me are so expensive, and I don't want to leave my house because of obvious reasons. Well, with Skillshare, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and it's all digital videos for you to watch at home. And since the charge is by month and not by individual class, you can take tons of classes at once for no extra charge. So if you want to follow your passions, head to the description. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link will get a free trial of premium membership. So go! Seriously, like go now. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And please, pursue your passions, but remember who you are. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!